Hello friends, we just got in. You're at that 1870s homestead. My name's Rachel and we just got in with our big basket of herbs and wild edibles that we are getting prepared for both herbs and teas. So I wanted to share this process with you because it's the first time I am freeze drying my herbs. Normally my process is, which is totally fine, I've done it for the last seven years, hang my herbs or wild foraged greens or whatever and just hang them from we have like a light fixture in the dining room and I would just hang them from that to dry and that's what I've done forever but freeze drying is going to just retain a little bit more of those nutrients so what did we pick together just in case some of you weren't here so we got a lot of violets the violets are just going to be for fun pretties and teas. Really, truly, the benefits and the medicinal properties would have been in the leaves of the violet plants. But since the flowers are edible, and they are so pretty, they're going to be absolutely gorgeous in teas. And should add a yummy flavor because, if you didn't know, you could actually make violet syrup and violet jelly out of these. And we have these just growing all over. You probably do too. And some of you may pull them as weeds because they're growing in places where you don't want them. But I think they make just lovely little perennial plants. And I told Todd the space that we're growing these this year um, is actually going to get redone. So I need to harvest these and transplant them somewhere else this fall. So, and then we grabbed a bunch of honeysuckle, and most of the flower petals, or the bulbs themselves, aren't open. So we're going to be doing some honeysuckle flowers, and the honeysuckle leaves themselves. And I made some cheat notes to look it up for you, because I, guys, I don't have this stuff memorized either, like remembering exactly what every plant is good for off memory. Um, so we're going to look this up together. And I will, I've already done that homework, and I'll share with you what some of these beneficial properties are of these plants that we harvested. And get them freeze dried, and they'll be ready for awesome things in the future. So, honeysuckle, urinary health, uh, headaches, diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis supposedly cancer, which take that with a grain of salt, but hey, I'm willing to try anything. Um, as a topical ointment, you could use it for, to treat inflammation of the skin, itching, and just germs, a general, you know, disinfectant. So, great benefits of honeysuckle. So we are going to add this and a lot, there's a lot of research out there on health benefits of um, natural foraged products like this from some very, very reputable sources. You know, you might read an article from, say, Susan, and you don't know Susan's education background, her testing background, or the resources she has to come up with uh, and I'm using Susan as a generic name. Um, but you don't know exactly, you know, are they just repeating something that they heard? But if you find, um, I guess for me, if I find articles from a university that has resources and has had years of testing capability, or you read um, research articles from... Um, like I, I'll find a lot of them from like the Mayo Clinic or something like that. Um, I feel a little bit better about like just, you know, people that have funding that can go and do good quality research for us. Now do I necessarily believe the FDA when they say that there's no proven health benefits so therefore you can't sell anything with the proven health benefits? No. So that's too government involved, in my opinion, um, to give us accurate information. So 
I'm going to. Isn't that just gorgeous already? So stinking beautiful. All right, so this tray is just going to be the honeysuckle and leaves and flowers. I'll bring you guys down so you can see. And then we've got this big old basket just filled with mint and strawberry leaves and raspberry leaves. So stay tuned because I'm going to share with you guys all those beneficial properties of all these things. And I have used these before, guys. I think the honey, only thing that I haven't used is the honeysuckle leaves before. I have used the honeysuckle flowers. So... Now, most of these flowers are still closed. Some of them are open. That's okay. We still have all the good sweet flavor in them. And almost everything you're going to harvest, you would want to do it like this. Earlier in the season, before things flower, um, the young spring bulbs, the young spring leaves. Um, but uh, to be honest with you, when it comes to my herbs and stuff, I'll even harvest those during the flowering season. You're just probably not going to ever get as sweet of a flavor once things go to flower. Alright, I just wrapped up the tray of honeysuckle and so beautiful, just so beautiful, and the violets. I was uh, thinking while I was doing this that oftentimes when I'm doing this like I am right now, I'm thinking about getting a head start on some amazing um, Christmas gift ideas. Maybe it's uh, a new mom, so some of these teas are going to be great for um, new mothers. Um, so just taking the time, getting the kids out there, the grandkids, whoever you have, and participating in collecting these, and then dry them however you choose. Like in my past, I always just um, hung them to dry, but maybe you have a dehydrator and you would prefer that, or you have a freeze dryer like myself that we're using today, and you could have some just really super thoughtful gifts ready to go. So now we are moving on to mint. Absolutely beautiful. We have lemon balm. Mmm, delicious. So mint. Um, basically, think a cure-all for stomach, like malaise. You know, if you have stomach aches, belly aches, colic for babies. Um, it's good for allergies and asthma. You could put it, make it like a tincture and use it for mouthwash. Um, it's really good for your oral health. That's why a lot of toothpaste come with that mint flavoring. Probably not good mint like this. Um, and then topically, it is good for skin health too. Oddly enough, I didn't know that. I just learned that when I was doing this research this morning. So we're just plucking all these. I mean, these are big, big mint leaves. So we're going to probably have a good solid tray of just mint. And I probably will not have room to freeze dry all of this, this first round, um, but I'll at least get through sharing with you guys um, the benefits of everything that we harvested together. And if you missed that harvest video, we'll link it right here for you guys. Alrighty, so that's a full tray of mint ready to go. Next up is lemon balm. And if you've never smelled like lemon balm, I have a, like a, a delicious childhood memory of Pledge. <laughs> Sounds disgusting for edible, but my mother was a Pledge junkie and it smells like Pledge to me. Just that, lim that lemon scented Pledge, I just love it. So we are doing some lemon balm and I, like I said, went through all my lemon balm yes, last year. So. Um, if you think of the calmingness of lemon, mint, a lot of things, lavender. So it's going to reduce stress, anxiety. It promotes sleep. It actually improves appetite. That was something new I learned. 
Um, it eases pain from stomach like gas or indigestion and colic in babies. So lemon balm is another great thing to add to, um, that's a strawberry leaf, to my mothering teas that I add because especially for a lactating tea, that stress reduction, that promotion of sleep, that ease of gas pains is going to pass through the mother onto the baby, the benefits, and I think it's a great addition. And that's where all my lemon balm went to last year. And then I used a bit of it uh, with chamomile for my toddler tea that I make for the young grandson. So now that he's older, same grandson. And I'll tell you what, that grandson, he's 18 months old and he's been drinking tea like from his, through his mom. They have a nightly tea uh, tradition and so had their tea and that baby loves his tea. He, I make it just like it would normal tea and then I add like three ice cubes to it and a little tea, uh, teaspoon of honey and he loves his tea at Granny's house. And it, the way I make it, so here's a good toddler tip tea. Um, we do, and this is good for probably babies, I don't know, nine months or older, you would just dilute it differently. Um, we do chamomile, lemon balm, um, steep that for like 10 to 12 minutes, and then we add a little uh, bit of cinnamon, a splash of apple cider vinegar, some lemon juice, and a little bit of honey, and that's our toddler tea. So we have a ton of lemon balm, and this might take the last of my trays. I can only fit four trays at a time in here. But I definitely, having the grandson now, um, we need lots more lemon balm than I had put up last year. So, I mean, that's a nice size lemon balm leaf. <sighs> that's what I do. Mmm, that and basil, probably my two favorite smelling herbs. Lemon verbena would be next, because I, I just love lemon. And I'll tell you what, this lemon balm with basil, um, throw some honeysuckle leaves in there for a good summertime sun tea. So good. And so... I'll show you like mint and lemon balm when you look at the texture of their leaves they look so similar just I have to remember that the mint is more oblong and smooth where the lemon balm is more jaggedy shaped okay we are ready to get these in the freeze dryer so we'll go in first with our two trays of lemon balm Finding a little bit more mint in there. And then our tray of honeysuckle leaves, flowers, and violet petals. That shouldn't take too long to freeze dry at all. All right, now let me show you what I have left. So this is a tray of raspberry leaves. I still have to pluck. So raspberry leaves, let me tell you, this is a really good one raspberry leaves. Excellent for reproductive organ health. It balances hormones, um, it fortifies breast milk production, has iron in it, anti-inflammatory, and good for hair growth. This is like the base for me for um, the green in my mother's milk tea. So excellent one. It's going to help them recover after childbirth and it's just going to help with the balancing of the hormones and it's a really 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 good one 
and the next one that we have is this is all strawberry leaves. Now strawberry leaves are great with vitamin C, iron, calcium, uh, digestion, nausea, stomach cramps. So strawberry leaves is another great one. Get those out just so that, because they are damp from early morning harvest. And I don't want them to mildew, so just spread those out. Lots and lots of strawberry leaves. There's a raspberry leaf. So raspberry leaves over here. Fluff those up a little bit to get them nice and airy. And oregano. So oregano is so much more than just an herb for culinary cooking. One of the nature's, it is truly, nature's most powerful natural source of antibiotics. So making yourself an oregano tincture, um, you will have like the best medicine um, for free, basically, just by growing yourself some oregano. And so look it up. I'm not an herbalist. I'm not an educated herbalist. I'm self-taught by going out, learning, researching what, um, like I said, medical science um, journals have published. I have a, a recommendation of Amy Fuel from the Fuel Homestead. She is a certified herbalist, so I really trust her knowledge. Um, so I think I'm going to have easily three trays of strawberry leaves. I need to go out and do a, a much bigger harvest of raspberry leaves. And then we have the bulk of the rest of this is oregano. So a little bit of time in there. Ooh. This is the best year I deliberately harvested strawberry leaves like this. So we're going to have some excellent, excellent tea for giving, for ourselves, for future mamas. So, but as always, do your own research when it comes to herbs because some herbs can be um, not good partners with modern medicine. So if you're like on blood thinners and things like that, there might be herbs that you should stay away from. Um, so, I'm finding some honeysuckle buds still in here. That's it though, guys. That's all I wanted to share is kind of the, what did we go out and harvest the other day together? How am I preserving it? And um, maybe if there's time before this video publishes, I'll show you what they look like in the jars, all freeze-dried and beautiful. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for joining me on today's video, and I'll see you guys on the next one.